Hello there, Drew Hannish Whiskey Lore, and time for another round of Bracketology. This is, I've got seven whiskeys set aside for the Elite Eight. I have one more to add to it, and I got two heavyweights going on today. I have the Laphroaig. This is not the current Karchus, but this is the Karchus previous, which is done in Pedro Jimenez casks, versus the Glenglassa. Torfa, and this is one of those whiskeys that's just an absolute favorite of mine. And so we are going from, from a whiskey that is from right up here along the North Sea to a whiskey that comes from down here in Isla. All right. Before I jump into this, by the way, I want to thank everybody who is starting to post your top three favorites for your own bracketology. We're going to start next week doing uh, votes for you guys. 128 whiskeys to number one. Your favorite whiskey is not going to be included potentially unless you nominate it. And so this week you got a chance to nominate up to three whiskeys. Just do it in the comments below. And, um, and then I will on Sunday, while everybody's having fun on Christmas, I will be doing some bracketing probably during the evening. Who knows? While I'm sitting, I love to do that while I'm sitting in front of the TV and work on those types of activities. I was going to say mindless activities, but I am going to have to think about pairing up. The way the brackets work is uh, I do world whiskeys versus American whiskeys, so 64 of each, and then they come down to a champion. And last year it was Four Roses and their 2020 version. This year I'm trying to keep the whiskeys that everybody can actually access and get their hands on in some way or form. All right, so now it is time to jump into this tasting and uh, this is gonna be tough because Torfa is definitely a solid whiskey. This is what I love about doing these matchups is that I'm really putting my opinion to the test because I've tasted these in isolation and in isolation, man, Torfa is one of my very favorite whiskeys. Now it has a heavyweight challenger in this Laphroaig, and so we'll see what happens. Now, Karchus is a series of whiskeys that were started by John Campbell of Laphroaig back around 2009, and they started doing non-H stated versions of the whiskey around 2013. And if you watch my interview or listen to my interview with John Campbell, uh, now of Loch Lee, but who was with Laphroaig for all those years. Uh, he mentions that eight years is his favorite age of a Laphroaig. And so when he started doing the Karchus, they started doing these at eight years. Uh, because like me, he feels that the longer it sits in that cask, the more it starts losing the character of what we would call kind of that Laphroaig stamp on what a whiskey tastes like, uh, what their whiskey tastes like. So, um, and interesting because Karchus has, ah, oh man, I, I really kind of ignored this for a while. And then I was sitting in a, um, bar here in Greenville and they had it and they poured it and I, I was floored. It was one of the best, if not the best whiskey I ever tasted. And I liked the Lefroy Freud character. And then I went to the store because I knew I had seen it in the stores before and it wasn't there. And I asked and they said, oh, we don't know if we're going to get any more in. And then I found out, well, it was a limited edition and that edition's gone and they were on to a newer edition. And so I sat there disappointed for a while, kept looking for the, the triple wood, which is what that was. Then they came out with this one, which is the Castrain Pedro Menez. And I thought... Man, I had the sherry oak, and I wasn't a big fan of it. So I was a little worried about this one. But I went ahead and bought it. And boy, was I surprised and pleased because it actually was so much better and much more of what I was looking for in terms of a Laphroaig. So this is um, basically... Well, I was going to tell you, the um, for those that don't know, the Karchus 
There have been other versions that I would love to try. The cask of Amontillado is one of their early ones. They've done some with Maker's Mark casks. In fact, the newest one, Warehouse One, is done in Maker's Mark casks. They've done Port Portwood. Um, they've done Madeira. So there's been a variety of different ones out there. And when I was looking on their website, Friends of Lefroy, I don't know if it's still available or not, but for 250 pounds, you can get the last four versions, including that triple wood. And then there's like 89 pound vat on top of that. And then uh, add to that whatever your shipping costs are. And I don't know if they ship to the United States, but I mean, I, ugh, when I saw that, I was like, I should, I should, but I didn't. Uh. So there's a nice little bit of nuttiness to this. It, it is definitely smoke and a lot of that dark fruit coming in uh, together. I, I get a little bit of say like plum on the nose on this one. A little bit of seaweed as usual, kind of a, a toasted smokiness to this. It definitely has that staple Lefroy scent, but it's tamped down a bit. And it makes me think that if somebody wants to get into Lefroy, but they don't want to dive right into something that's going to be, you know, more aggressive, that this might be a nice step in because it's got that little bit of sherry to get you over the, uh, over the hump. But this is high proof. This is 58 58.9% ABV, so fairly strong. Cheers. Mmm. The berry on this. Oh, strawberry. Intense. The heat on this does come through. It is actually quite peppery. Um, at first, and if you take a big mouthful of it, it'll definitely get peppery and it will give you, for those that don't know what a Kentucky hug is, if you are a uh, scotch drinker, what you're feeling in your chest, they call that the Kentucky hug. So you're, you're getting an Isla hug on this one. It, I mean, it is strawberry jam. It has a lot of berry influence on it. Of course, the smoke is there. Of course, that standard Lefroy flavor comes through. But it's all a little bit more mild. And the, the PX, if you're not a fan of sweet PX, this might not be, bad pun, your jam. <laughs> because... It really does taste like a, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with an excessive amount of strawberry jam uh, when you put it on your palate. It is very strong uh, in terms of sweetness. And so it may turn off the people who are not PX fans. But for me, wow. I mean, that is a really nice uh, combination of the two. Now it finishes nice and clean. And actually, yesterday when I was doing the Deanston and Glen Goyne pairing, I could not cleanse my palate enough between the two. I mean, I drank a decent amount of water, and it was hard to get those flavors off of my palate. This, I almost don't know if I need to drink water, although I will, because it is such a clean finish. Really well done. I mean, I like a long... I like a long finish, but I, I don't know that I necessarily need a finish that is going to be with me into next week. You know, <laughs> there's a point where uh, you, you've had enough. So, but that's really good. That is really good. It's going to be tough. Torfa is, like I say, top notch for me. So this is going to be an interesting pairing. Now, this is 50% ABV. Mm. And it comes at you with a... Toasted caramel, that sea salt note that comes through, not the medicinal. But that caramel is so rich, even on the nose. A little bit of smoke comes in, but it's much lighter than the Lefroy. 
and again, goes for more of a foresty smoke. I mean, when I smell this, mm, I just, I, I, I get that impression of being out on the beach with a campfire and, um, you know, you're sitting out there sipping on some, uh, some whiskeys with some friends. Really, really nice. This mouthfeel is just so nice. And that it just enhances the experience with that toffee. The smoke comes through. For being 50% ABV, it is an easy drinker. But it is so pleasant on the palate. If you are somebody that likes to put ice cubes in your whiskey, you're going to miss half of the experience of this because it is that mouthfeel that absolutely sells me on this whiskey. That is so nice. And it is, I mean, there's a little bacon character in there, um, but it is salted uh, caramel, really. There is that, uh, maybe a little bit of fruit note on it, like maybe a pear apple, but it is so light. It's really not, I mean, you really have to look for those to pull those out. I seriously love both of these whiskeys, and I will be flat out honest. If I could swap out Glen Goyne for one of these two and move both of these ahead, I would do it because these are both such great whiskeys, and I hate to see either of them go. And yesterday, while I was feeling, I, I was like, well, I love both of these whiskeys, but I feel like um, they got matched up in a, a bracket where if they'd gone against something else that's more of a favorite, they might have lost out. And, um, hey, it's my bracketology, and this is what's going to happen. I'm moving both these forward because I just love them, but I love them for different reasons. And I hate to do it, but I'm going to boot Glen Goyne because out of my top eight, out of the out of the seven that I've got in there right now, that may be the weakest link. Still a great whiskey, but honestly, I would rather see both of these in that final eight because I think they deserve to be there. I really can't kick either one of these out, and I don't know how I'm going to do this final eight, but I'm going to do my best. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, which of these do you have? You had both of these. Do you have a favorite amongst them? And please make sure that you put your three favorite whiskeys down for the year uh, in the comments so that I can add them into Bracketology. They can be Scotch, they can be Irish whiskey, they can be bourbon, they can be rye, they can be, they can be, I don't care where they come from, really, as long as they're whiskeys that the majority of the people in the world would be able to get in some way or another, and then we'll get them into our Bracketology that you'll be able to start voting on starting next week. And uh, like the video if you enjoyed it, learned something from it. And um, until next time, cheers and slán javá. I was just thinking, is this like a tie in, in sport? It just drives you nuts. You're like, oh, I tuned in. I watched this whole thing. I wanted a winner. Both one. How about that? We'll see how they do. They may meet again.